Welcome to the 10th lecture on sequence of real numbers. Today we will discuss ratio and root tests. So these two tests, these give some sufficient conditions for a sequence to converge to zero. And these also give some sufficient conditions for a sequence to diverge to infinity. So here is ratio test. It says that if you consider a sequence x sub n, a sequence of positive real numbers such that this limit exists. So this limit n tends to infinity of this ratio. This is n plus first term divided by nth term. Limit of this ratio if it is L and suppose this range. So 0 less than or equal to L less than 1. So suppose L lies in this range then limit n tends to infinity xn is 0 and it also gives another condition that is second statement it says that if l is greater than 1 then limit n tends to infinity xn is infinity. So in this case xn this sequence it diverges to infinity. So this test uh, it is giving some sufficient conditions so this is the sufficient condition for a sequence to converge to 0 and this is the sufficient condition for a sequence to diverge to infinity. So these are not necessary conditions. One can construct examples where limit n tends to infinity xn is 0 but uh, L is not in this range. And one can construct example where xn diverges to infinity but uh, this limit exists and it is not in this range. So these are not necessary conditions but this test it is giving some sufficient conditions only. So but this theorem is not saying anything about the case when L is same as 1. So if L is equal to 1 above that means L limit n tends to infinity of this ratio uh, it is 1. In that case we cannot conclude anything. So here are some examples. So you consider this sequence whose nth term is n. In this case limit n tends to infinity this ratio this limit it is just limit n tends to infinity n plus 1 divided by n and we know the limit of this thing it is just 1. Okay. So in this case this, this value it is 1 and we can see that this sequence it is a divergent sequence it diverges to infinity. But if you consider this sequence whose nth term is 1 by n in this case also limit n tends to infinity x n plus 1 divided by x and this limit it is same as 1 but in this sequence it is a convergent sequence it converges to 0. So when limit of this ratio is 1 then we cannot conclude anything. So this test it is considering only these two cases okay? and these are giving some sufficient conditions. And here is root test. So hypothesis is basically same. So you consider a sequence of positive real numbers such that limit n tends to infinity. Uh, this is nth root of xn. So xn is some uh, positive real number. Then one can consider nth root of xn. So this is just x. This is just x sub n whole power 1 by n. So suppose this limit exists and this limit is same as L. And then this test it is giving some sufficient conditions for a sequence to converge to 0. So this is the sufficient condition for this sequence to converge to 0. And if L is greater than 1 then limit n tends to infinity xn is infinity. Okay? So same remark that if this limit is 1 then nothing can be concluded. We cannot conclude anything. So here are examples. So again you consider this sequence. And in this case you can see that limit n tends to infinity uh, of this root nth root of n it is just n power 1 by n limit of this thing it is 1 and in this case it is a divergent sequence and you consider same sequence 1 by n whose nth term is 1 by n. So in this case also this limit is 1 but in this case 1 by n this sequence it is a convergent sequence. So when this limit is 1 then we cannot conclude anything and as before these are giving some sufficient conditions for this but these are not necessary. So it is not necessary that L should lie in this range for a sequence to converge to 0. So you can construct example 
of sequence of real numbers where limit of that sequence is 0 but L is not lying in this range. Okay. Now using ratio test how we can uh, compute limit so let us see that. So here is the problem so prove that limit n tends to infinity n power k times x power n that is 0 where k this power it is some natural number and this x it is some real number whose absolute value is less than 1. So this limit it is same as 0 it is something non-trivial but we can use ratio test to conclude this fact okay and how we can use ratio test in the ratio test we consider only sequence of positive real numbers but this term it can be negative as well but what we can do here you can consider the sequence of this absolute value then these are sequence of positive real numbers and then you can apply ratio test so you consider this ratio this is the ratio of n plus first term divided by nth term and then this term it is same as this one and limit of this thing since mod x it is constant you can take this thing out of limit so it is mod x times limit of this value but this one it is just product of 1 plus 1 by n it is k many times and you know the relation between limit and product so limit of products it will be products of limits so it will be limit of this value k many times and what is limit of this value it is just 1 so ultimately you will get that this thing it is same as mod x and so so limit of this ratio it is just mod x some real number and it is less than 1 so you can apply ratio test and in ratio test you are getting this condition so you can have that limit of that sequence that should be 0 so here by ratio test you can conclude that limit n tends to infinity this thing it is 0 and hence limit n tends to infinity this uh, this thing it is 0 this is our desired result and how can you conclude uh, this thing from here so this is exercise one can try to solve this for a sequence x sub n of real numbers limit n tends to infinity this absolute value this limit is 0 it is equivalent to say that limit n tends to infinity xn is 0 one can prove that this is if and only if condition here is the proof of the ratio test so here we will give the sketch of the proof so first we will prove this statement so this limit l it is less than 1 therefore there exists a positive real number epsilon such that l plus epsilon that is also less than 1 so you consider this real line this is real line and 0 is here and 1 is here and suppose l is here so l is lying in between 0 and 1 and l is less than 1 then you can always find some positive real number epsilon so that this value l plus epsilon that is also less than 1 we also have to use the fact that l is the limit of this ratio so therefore for this positive real number there exists a natural number n such that this term it lies in this range for all natural numbers beyond beyond n okay and you set l plus epsilon you set it as r so then absolute value of r it is less than 1 because l plus epsilon it is some positive number and it is less than 1 okay so we will just consider this inequality okay and we have this inequality for all natural numbers beyond this capital n okay so therefore from this inequality we have that x sub n plus 1 it is less than x sub n times r for all natural numbers beyond n okay and therefore x sub n it is less than this particular value times r power this natural number n minus this capital n minus 1 
So this one we can write in this way. So it is just x sub n plus 1 divided by r power n plus 1. So this is some fixed value. Okay. And here we have r power n. And if we, if we take limit of this thing, since this is constant, you can take this thing out and limit of limit n tends to infinity of r power n this limit it is 0 because absolute value of r it is less than 1. So one can one can prove this thing I will leave it as exercise that you prove that limit n tends to infinity r power n that is 0. So once you have this thing then you can apply sandwich theorem because you are getting that 0 less than xn so you are considering sequence of positive real numbers so each term it is greater than 0 so you can have that x 0 less than xn that is less than this value and limit of this thing it is and limit of this thing that is also 0 so you can use you can apply sandwich theorem so by sandwich theorem you can conclude that limit n tends to infinity xn is 0 so of course we have these inequalities for all natural numbers beyond n but, but in this case also you can apply sandwich theorem because the notion of limit it is just asymptotic behavior okay and here is the proof of the second uh, statement so uh, limit of this ratio is l and suppose l is greater than 1 then limit n tends to infinity xn it is infinity we need to prove so since l is greater than 1 so suppose 0 is here and 1 is here and l is something greater than 1 then you can always find a positive real number epsilon such that after subtracting epsilon from l again you will get some value which is greater than 1 okay so there exists a positive real number epsilon such that l minus epsilon is greater than 1 and since we have this limit so for that, that same epsilon there exists a natural number n such that this term it lies in this range. So it, it lies in this range for all natural numbers beyond this big n. Okay? And then you set L minus epsilon as S. Okay? So since L minus epsilon is greater than 1 so S is greater than 1 and you consider this inequality. So from here you can get that x sub n plus 1 it is greater than s times xn for all natural numbers beyond big n and from here you can get this inequality so xn it is greater than s power n minus this big n minus 1 times times x sub n plus 1 so this is some fixed value and write this thing as x sub n plus 1 divided by s power n plus 1 times s power n okay so this is some fixed real number times s power n and you have this inequality for all natural numbers beyond n okay but limit of this thing it is infinity because this is just constant and one can prove that limit n tends to infinity s power n it is infinity because s is greater than 1 Okay. So since this limit is infinity, limit of this thing that is also infinity, one can prove. Okay. So we have proved this second statement. Here is the proof of the root test. So proof is basically same. I will quickly give the sketch of the proof here. So again you consider uh, this is sequence of positive real numbers and L is the limit of uh, this root and suppose L lies in this range. So in this again, so L is less than 1 and you can have a positive real number epsilon such that L plus epsilon that is also less than 1. And since L is the limit of this thing, of this L satisfies epsilon n condition. So for this particular epsilon there exists a natural number n such that this term it, it lies in this range for all natural numbers beyond n and you consider this inequality. So you set L plus epsilon as R and then you can have that if you take if you consider this inequality and if you take power to n then you get xn that is less than r power n. So you have these inequalities 
for all natural numbers beyond n and then you can apply sandwich theorem so since limit of this thing is zero and limit of this thing that is also zero because absolute value of r it is less than one and then applying sandwich theorem limit n tends to infinity xn is zero and proof of the second part in this case L is greater than 1, so there exists a positive real number epsilon such that L minus epsilon it is greater than 1. So L is somewhere here, it is greater than 1, then you can always find uh, a positive uh, real number epsilon such that L minus epsilon that is also greater than 1. And since L is the limit of this thing, so for this particular epsilon there exists a natural number n such that uh, all the terms beyond that natural number all the terms lie in this range you just consider this inequality you set l minus epsilon as s then s is greater than one so you have these inequalities for all natural numbers beyond this big n and since limit n tends to infinity s power n is infinity limit xn that is also infinity and that's all i'll stop here